Hi everybody, this is Laura, City Scrapper. Thank you so much for joining me on my channel. Today I am excited to show you this layout that I made using Shimmers Paints Color Splash Glossy Acrylic Sprays and my brand new gel plate. I bought this probably about a month ago and I just started using the gel plate. I wanted to create some scrapbook layout backgrounds, but I didn't want them to be too bright and bold. I wanted them to be more subtle. I'm always trying to make my mixed media backgrounds subtle so that my photos and my embellishments will stand out. So I thought I would give this a try. I put some sprays on the gel plate. I used the brayer to spread them around and then I absolutely loved this result. I wanted to add a little bit more color on the bottom. I thought maybe if I pressed a little more, some more color would transfer, but it became clear to me that I had to actually add some more sprays at the bottom. So I added a little more yellow, and you could see that the background that I created looks like it has blue and green because of course the yellow is mixing together with the blue, and I just thought that this background would be perfect for uh, a beach themed layout. I was very happy with the way that second application of paint came out. It filled in a couple of areas and I am very excited, not just for this background, but for a number of the backgrounds that I created. And this will not be the last layout that I show you using the gel plate and the color splash shimmers paints. To create this layout, I'm using a Prima marketing collection called Surfboard. I thought it went really well with my photo that I will show you in a few moments, and also with the background that I created with the shimmers paints. I'm using some Distress Oxides to ink the edges of a number of the embellishments I'm going to put on the page. Some of these are embellishments from the embellishment pack from the collection, and the leaves were cut using a Sizzix branch die. And then on the bottom, you could see a border that I punched out using a Martha Stewart border punch. I used three different colors to ink the edges, and I matched the ink to the primary color of the die cut. I used Spice Marmalade, Forest Moss, and Victorian Velvet. All of the flowers in the upper left-hand corner of my mat, those were all fussy cut from one of the pattern papers. I also fussy cut one of the palm trees, the one that I'm inking right now, from one of the pattern papers. I just absolutely love this collection, so I bought two paper pads. One was on a fantastic clearance, so I just had to pick it up. But I find that I buy way too many beach-themed collections. I absolutely love them, but I don't have too many photos of the beach or my family at the beach. So my daughter really saved me by taking a whole bunch of pictures when she went to the Dominican Republic last spring. I have now a nice stack of tropical photos that I can scrapbook using some of these beach themed papers and collections. I wanted to put a banner under the photo, so I used a dye that was in my stash. I cut it out of white cardstock three times out of green pattern paper once using some scraps of paper I cut out just a couple of sections of the banner in each of several different colors and then I'm going to combine all the colors on the banner. The dark green pattern paper that I'm using right now that is not from this collection that is a piece of paper from my stash. I thought this color matched really well with the leaves on the flowers so I thought that I would incorporate this color into the layout as well. After I glued the four layers of the banner together, I used some Distress Oxide in Forest Moss and I inked the edges. And now I'm adding some sections of the banner in different colors. I used the ink that's left on the daubers to ink the edges of each of these little sections of the banner. I, of course, used the corresponding color. I really like this banner die. I really love dies in general that have the impression of stitching along the edges, and this has it along the edges of each of the sections of the banner. It also has a little petite bow on either side of the banner, and I think that that's really cute too. So I have a couple of favorite banner dies, but this is definitely one of the best ones. Lately, banners have become one of my favorite embellishments. I love putting them under photos. I wanted to add some layers of pattern paper 
behind the photo. I have some rectangles, but you can see that I also have some kind of scraps of paper too. Because only the edges are visible, sometimes you don't need an entire rectangle. You could just use what smaller pieces of paper that you have. So I ink the edges of all of these papers. I don't end up using them all behind the photo. I didn't want that whole photo cluster to get too large. So I used some of them, but not all of them. First though, I mounted the entire picture on an orange mat. I wanted that to go all around the photo. I thought that that orange color would contrast nicely with the background. And then I thought I would layer up a few other papers and have them visible just around the edges, just to make the whole photo cluster look a little more interesting. I ended up using some of the papers to fill in some gaps in the corners. Once I decided where I was putting all the papers, I attached them together with some ATG adhesive. And now I'm going to start putting some of the elements that I've been working on together. I cut a four inch strip of this beautiful pattern paper. I'll get back to that in a moment. I end up altering that a little bit. Here's my gel press background. I'm adding some modeling paste through a hexagon stencil. I'm using some Liquitex modeling paste. Not too much of this is visible on the final layout. A lot of this ends up being behind the clusters and the strip of paper at the bottom of the page, but there are definitely traces of it visible and I always like adding a little bit of texture to the background. I added the modeling paste in three main places. I have a large area of it on the left-hand side of the layout where I'm planning on putting the photo. I'm also thinking I might put a small cluster up at the top, so I put some modeling paste up there. And then I'm also adding some on the bottom right hand side where I'm thinking I might add another cluster. At the last moment, I decided to add a tiny bit of modeling paste in between those two clusters at the top. And in the end, that turns out to be the most visible cluster of modeling paste. Now I'm adding some splatters to the background using the Simmers Paint Color Splash in Sea Breeze. I'm just tapping my scissors against the top of the nozzle and that helps to make the splatters rather small. And now I'm adding some watered down white acrylic paint splatters, something that I add on a lot of my mixed media backgrounds. I just love the way it just brings everything in the background together. And then I set the background aside to dry. I decided that I wanted to distress this strip of paper. I'm using a craft knife and a metal ruler, and I am scoring and then cutting through each of the lines that separate the different colors of wood. I accidentally cut all the way through on one of the strips, but for most of them, I left a little bit of space at the top and the bottom so that the pieces wouldn't come apart. Now I'm using my scissors and I'm distressing all of these edges. It's really not a great idea to use your scissors in this way. It dulls the blade. I have one pair of Cutter B scissors though that doesn't work correctly. So I decided that I was going to use those scissors for distressing edges since I so frequently reach for my scissors in order to do this. So these scissors, they don't meet at the top. So now they are the designated distressing scissors. Using the back of the scissors, that also works really well. So that's another option in case you don't want to dull your scissors. I'm inking the edges of each of these cuts that I made using the daubers that were on my desk. I use the pink dauber for both the light and the dark pink. I use orange for the orange. I use blue for the blue. And then I just decided that I wasn't going to ink the edges of the white strips because there was color on both sides of them, and I think that that worked out okay. I added some adhesive to the back of this whole strip, and then I'm going to attach that down to the background. I put the background on the back porch so that it would dry quickly. It was a really beautiful sunny day, and that worked to dry that white acrylic paint, which can sometimes take kind of a long time to dry, especially when I'm anxious to complete a layout or at least get working on it. I have my photo on the left-hand side. I put it on a slight angle. 
And then I started to add all of those elements that I had inked earlier to the page. As I said, when I was adding the modeling paste, I'm going to have a cluster in the upper right hand corner. I'm also going to have some embellishments on the top of the photo and along the wood on the right hand side of the layout. The flowers are the main elements in these clusters, but I also wanted to add some other images to each of the clusters. I have some palm trees on the right hand side of the photo. I put the banner that I made earlier underneath the photo. You will notice at the end of the video, at the final picture of the layout, that I move the palm trees much closer to the photo than they are now. I really like those palm trees and I like where they are, but I just felt that they were making the cluster there a little bit too large, especially since I add more to that cluster in a little while. And I think that that helped to not make the cluster look so huge. The embellishments are generally where I want them, so I'm starting to attach them down to the page. For the flowers that are above the photo, I use some fun foam and I pop them up to give them a little bit more dimension. Those flowers are resting on top of the photo, and even though the photo isn't popped up with foam, there are a few layers of paper there which makes the photo have a little bit of dimension, and I thought that the fun foam helped the flowers to sit correctly on top of the photo. For the cluster in the upper right hand corner, I'm using a piece of chipboard that says every moment matters. That's going to serve as my title. I put some extra adhesive on the back of that chipboard piece and then I position the flowers behind it. Now I'm working on what's going to be the largest cluster to the right hand side of the photo. I moved the heart closer to the photo and then just like I did in the upper right hand corner, I tucked the flowers behind that chipboard piece. I attached down the palm trees and the flowers in that cluster, and then I decided to add a little bit more to the cluster at the top. I had a spare tropical leaf, so I tucked that between the two flowers. Now that I have all of the flowers attached down, I'm going to start embellishing those clusters with those large leaves that I die cut and inked before. I cut the leaves out in both green and orange, and I was thinking that I would start out with the orange branches. I tucked one of the orange branches into each of the clusters. Then I started adding some green branches. I knew I wanted to have at least one green branch in each of the clusters. I found that the branches were just a little bit too large, so I cut each of them back just a little bit. In some cases, I cut them back more than others, but I think that the scale of the branches when they are trimmed a little bit matches much better with the flowers that are on the layout. There was something about the cluster at the top that didn't look quite balanced to me. I decided to take away that spare leaf and add a flower that had a leaf attached to it, and now I think the cluster looks a little bit more balanced. I had the punched out border that I was actually planning on putting at the top of the layout, but there was kind of a lot going on up there now. So I decided that it might also look nice going along the edge of the wood grain paper. And after I tried it, I decided that that is where I wanted to put it. So I had to move some of the embellishments around a little bit, relocate them temporarily, and tuck that border in behind the wood grain strip. I had some die cuts that I really wanted to include on the layout. There was a pink shell and a blue shell. I ended up tucking the blue shell into this large cluster, but I didn't use the pink shell on the layout. I think there were a lot of embellishments and I couldn't find the right spot for it, so I'll use it on another layout. Now I'm once again using my Cutter B scissors and I am further distressing the slats at the bottom of the layout. I just wanted it to have a little bit more of a distressed look. I had this Jolie's octopus that matched the colors on the layout perfectly and I thought it would look nice sitting on top of the title. There were some clear, almost like enamel dots, but they had some iridescence behind them that were on that same Jolie's sticker sheet, so I added some of those to each of the clusters. There were some Prima Say It In Crystals 
dots that I put in a few places too, although I do end up removing those blue dots. I just decided to go in a different direction. I added some very tiny blue enamel dots to the banner. I'm going to also add some small pink enamel dots in a little while. I love to add photo corners to my layouts. I used my EK Success scalloped photo corner punch. I punched out some pink photo corners and then I inked the edges of those photo corners and I placed them on the layout. I didn't attach them down. This is where I remove those blue dots. And now I'm going to add some clear dots that are called dew drops. I have them in three different sizes. I got them from KS Craft on AliExpress and I'm adding those mainly around those large clusters in order to add just another element and texture to the layout. I attached the dew drops down to the layout off camera. I use glossy accents. I think that's a great adhesive for attaching things like this and sequins and jewels to layouts. I am now attaching those photo corners down to the photos and I'm adding some white enamel dots to each of the photo corners. This is where you can see me using the glossy accents. Those enamel dots didn't have too much stick to them and I think that the glossy accents is really good for making sure that embellishments like these stay attached to your layout long term. In order to secure those branches to the layout, I use some gel glue. I just put a little bit of glue behind each of the die cuts to hold them down to the layout. I don't like to add a lot of glue to embellishments like these. I just put a little dab of glue at the base of each one of them and that's enough to hold them down. This is the very last touch and here come some close-ups. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. I had so much fun using that gel plate with the Shimmers Color Splash sprays. I will definitely have some more videos with the gel plate and those sprays. If you look in the description box, you'll find the link to the Shimmers website. You can check out all the beautiful colors that Color Splash is available in. And when you place an order, if you mention my name in the comments, you'll receive a free gift. I hope you have a fantastic day. I'll see you again soon. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.